Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at how to lower the temperatures on our Ryzen 7000 series system. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video we're going to take a look at how to tame our Ryzen 7000 series processor temperatures and power usage, which, if you've not uh, been paying close attention to the latest AM5 platform, it's a little bit spicy and it takes a little bit more than usual to actually keep it under control. And currently my system is being cooled by a 360 mil AIO, which is actually one of the better ones on the market. And it still hits 93 degrees Celsius or more. That is uncomfortably warm. Now it is totally within the AMD design specifications. So if your system is hitting 95 degrees Celsius, that is its intended target. It tries to just hit 95 degrees Celsius and all the other stuff kind of fits in in between. But it does seem a little bit uncomfortable and it does seem to use a considerable amount of wattage. This is only a 7600X and yet still draws 142 watts, which is basically the same as my previous Ryzen 3900X, which was a 12 core monster. This has only got six cores. So yeah, something is not right somewhere. The performance of this thing is off the hook, but I do want to get those temps down. And it's really annoying when sometimes it just does something in the background and all the fans just ramp up it's uh, an absolute nightmare. So today we're going to take a look at things we can put in the BIOS rather than going into software. Now, of course, you can use things like uh, the Ryzen Master software and other different tweaks to get your system temperatures right down however you want it. But I actually quite like to do it in the BIOS because it's just another piece of software that I don't need to install. So let's head over to the computer and see how it's all done. So first of all, you're going to see me in the BIOS tweaking some settings, which you may want to follow along with, obviously. Do take into consideration your system may differ. You may have a different processor, etc. So some of the settings you may need to change specifically for your particular system. I will try and link in the video description below some specific settings for various different Ryzen 7000 processors. So with that said, let's get on with it. Okay, so let's start taking a look at what we can do to reduce these temps. So on this particular board, MSI board, uh, we can go to overclocking settings. And what you want to look for is your advanced CPU configuration, which is this one here and we want to go into AMD overclocking and we want position boost overdrive and we need to change this to advanced. So now we've got the curb optimizer option which magically appears and this is going to be probably one of the best places to actually reduce some of these temps. So currently curve optimizer is disabled so we're going to choose all cores and what you want to do is you actually want to reduce your voltage that's going into the processor. So we're going to set this to negative rather than positive. And this is the bit where it will trip up some people. Now, depending on the quality of your silicon and also the processor that you're using in the 7000 series, this may or may not work straight away for you. Now, the maximum you can put in here as it stands currently is 30. So that is a negative 30 offset for your voltages, etc. Yours may work at that, it may not. You may have to do it very much like overclocking. When you're doing underclocking, then it's kind of like trial and error. So we're gonna go with 30, which should be fine. I have tested this already and it has worked and there's been very few, if any, problems that I could put down to actually underclocking the processor. So this is the first one to do. So that is 30, so we'll leave that as 30. And what you can do then is you can just go in and actually just test the system just to make sure it's stable before you make any more changes. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna go ahead, close this down. We're gonna save this, as you can see there. So PBO is gone from auto to advanced. Curve optimizer is currently enabled for all cores. And we've gone into a negative situation and we're setting our magnitude to 30. Again, you may need to reduce that to 25, 20, 15, 10, whatever your particular processor will cope with. So I'm gonna click on yes and go back into Windows now. So now the system's rebooted, so we can uh, give Cinebench another run just to see how it's affected performance, if at all, and obviously keep an eye on our temperatures. So previously at this point, we were heading towards 92 degrees. It looks like we're pretty stable, around about 80. So that is a significant drop already. And our core clock speeds have actually gone up pretty dramatically. So we've gone from roughly 5.2 all core to 5.365, 5.368. So it's looking pretty good so far. And there we go at the end. So we have increased our scores. So we're now at 15188. 
which is a, a significant jump in both numbers and clock speeds, etc. And temperature hasn't gone above 80 degrees. So we've already dropped off somewhere in the region of about 12 degrees Celsius. Our idle temps are basically the same. Clock speeds are up, performance is up. So now we reboot again and we'll go in and make some further changes to the BIOS. Now, obviously for you at home, you wanna probably make sure that your system is stable before you make any more changes. Otherwise you're not gonna know what changes have kind of made any effects to your system stability. Okay, so the next part is to try and reduce the temperatures a little bit further. So again, we go into our OC mode and advanced CPU configuration again. You can do it from here, config TDP. This is a new setting, but uh, on a little bit more control. So I'm gonna leave that set to auto. We're gonna go into AMD overclocking, gain into position boost overdrive. And the next one we want is the platform thermal throttle limit. So currently it's set to auto. So that is gonna be aiming for uh, 95 degrees Celsius before it starts thermal throttling. So we wanna bring it down a little bit just to keep the temps down. So we're gonna go with uh, 85, give that a go. You can put, set this to whatever you feel comfortable with. You can, if you want to set it to 80 or whatever, I would suggest doing it in kind of five or 10 degree increments and then testing your system to see what you get out of it and see if it limits your temperatures and obviously if it has a negative effect on performance or one way or the other. So that's fine for us. We're gonna try 85, so that's a 10 degree limit. So now we can close down, do a restart, and go back into Cinebench. Okay, so now we're back into Windows. Cinebench is up. I've let the system kind of stable and load all the background tasks, etc. And again, still temperatures in the low range, still getting to around about the 45 degrees. Pretty stable around that. So let's run Cinebench and uh, see how things have improved or conversely gone the other way. Okay, so that's run and we're in a very similar position. So just over 15,000 points. It hasn't really made a great deal of difference because our thermal limit was 85C. We're still only hitting around about 80. So the next thing we can do is, well, the, one of two things, obviously, if you wanted to on your particular system, you can reduce the actual thermal limit even more so. So it aims for maybe 70 degrees or 75 degrees or something like that. But there's also other ways we can change this. And this is by editing the actual power limits of the board. So that should give us a reduce in actual overall temps and also wattage. At the moment, you can see, even with the all-core load, we are hitting 105 watts, which is actually considerably down from the somewhere in the region of about 142, 150, maybe even 170 that it can run if you just let temperatures and all those things run wild. So let's go back into the BIOS and we'll do a little bit more tweaking. Okay, so for our next part, we're gonna go into our power usage. So we know we're at roughly 103 watts or 105 watts, whatever it was, under Cinebench, so let's go back into our limits here. So we're gonna go into our PBO limits. So we're gonna go from manual, and we're gonna just change our PPT limit. So this is uh, power targets. You can pretty much mess around with this as much as you want to. Obviously, depending on what your loads are, your mileage may differ, and depending on what you wanna get out of the system. Obviously, if you wanna run this in an ITX little tiny box, and uh, you're just watching movies, etc., and just want it to be as quiet and as um, cool as possible, then lower it right down. You can go down to something like 35 watts if you want to. But uh, we went with 85 degrees for our platform limit, so let's uh, see what we can get with 85 watts, which is about 20 watts less than what it's currently trying to use. So 20 watts is actually a pretty decent saving. So we're gonna go with our PPT limit of 85 watts. This is fine for 7600X and 7700X. I've seen 7700Xs run at this sort of thing, so potentially we could lower it to maybe 75 possibly, but that's for you to play with. This is just a demonstration of seeing what is possible with changing some of these settings, which is actually pretty easy to do. So let's reboot again and give Cinebench another run. So there we go, there's our PBO limits. We're still at manual and 85 watts from auto. Okay, so there we go, there is our Cinebench run done with uh, all of our settings tweaked. And we're kind of back to where we were at square one. So points wise, we've got 14,756, which is pretty much identical to how we started off in the stock configuration. But now we're using a lot less wattage. So we maxed out here at 87.23 watts. And what is the best part is the package temperature didn't get over 70 degrees Celsius. We're down at 68.1 degrees Celsius which actually considering the room is currently, just looking around on the thermometer, is about 23, 24 degrees Celsius. 
that is pretty impressive and uh, considering how hot these new Ryzen 7000 series chips can potentially run, it's uh, yeah a pr pretty good shout overall. And we're still getting those boost clocks up to getting close to 5.5 gigahertz, which is absolutely awesome. So overall, I think it's done very, very well. Things are looking good. Temperatures are under control. The fans aren't going mental all the time. And the system is currently idling at a relatively tepid 44.5 degrees Celsius. So that is approximately 10 degrees over ambient, which is basically what I was getting before with my previous AM4 setups. So that is uh, pretty impressive. The one the downside is our package power on idle. And actually, if I close Cinebench as well, just uh, idling, our package wattage is still quite high, a little bit higher than I'd like to see especially compared with my Intel 13th gen system. But hopefully things will improve as BIOSes update, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, back to Mike. So there you go, there is some, uh, some pretty good advice there. If you wanna try and replicate this on your own Ryzen 7000 systems, then please feel free to do so. If you want any more guidance or advice, please feel free to head over to our Discord chat and I will try and walk you through various different configurations and settings should you need it. Again, like I said, there will be links in the video description or just some text files there to give you rough ideas of the kind of settings you can apply to your specific processor. As always, with the silicon lottery, your mileage may vary and your results may differ from mine. But overall, I'm pretty pleased we've gone from somewhere in the region of about 93 degrees Celsius as being our top end temperature, down to under 70, which is a fantastic saving. And not only that, we've saved some wattage as well. So we've gone from somewhere in the region of about 140 watts down to a measly 87 watts. So that is actually a pretty decent saving, getting towards 50%. So anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, then please smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit subscribe and the chime notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.